On behalf of the National Give Back for Kids campaign, thank you for watching our very first show. Ignite, empower, transform. Now let me welcome our very first guest, Eddie Cabuera. Welcome, Eddie. Hey, welcome, Rebecca. I mean, thank you, Rebecca. <laughs> My very first question is, tell us a few things about yourself. Well, my name is Eddie Cabrera Jr. I'm from the Bronx, New York, raised in the Bronx, New York. I attend school in the Bronx, New York. I, go, I attend the Eagle Academy for Young Men. Um, I go to the Greater Zion Baptist Church, and I'm the active senior patrol leader of Troop 777. What are some key lessons you learned in the Boy Scouts? Some key lessons that I've learned in the Boy Scouts include um, viewing things from different perspectives, because sometimes you're going to meet people who have different opinions from you but that doesn't give you a reason to not understand them or not get to understand them. So you should always learn to talk to other people and get to know them. What is your favorite experience in the Boy Scouts? My favorite experience in the Boy Scouts is actually getting to work at a Boy Scout camp. I was blessed with that opportunity last summer and working at a Boy Scout camp may have been most, one of the most rewarding things I've ever done because I was able to make one kid's week, spe just, uh, one kid's week special just how a staff member made my week special, and I was able to impact their lives, and I just love the feeling of that. Have you done any community service projects with the Boy Scouts? Um, actually, when I first became a Boy Scout, we went to Cortona Park and we helped restore the area and beautify it, and I felt that it was really rewarding to do that because I was able to give back to my community. In addition to that, I helped a place that I visit frequently. So it was a giving back experience that I will always remember. We consider you as an urban superhero. What is your superpower? Thank you. Um, I believe my superpower is my ability to express myself. And people may think expressing yourself is something that comes naturally, but some people are reluctant to do so or don't do it at all because they're just not sure what, what they feel or how they can express it. I feel that I'm able to do that with ease and God bless me with that ability. And I'm able to express my opinion without becoming too shallow or like becoming just hard-headed, I'm able to express my opinion and be ready for any feedback because I know what I feel. What is your kryptonite? I would have to say my kryptonite <laughs> would, um, it would probably be sometimes I surround myself with the wrong people. I mean, I try to see the good in everyone, but certain times there are going to be people who don't have the same ambitions as you and they don't have the same mindset. They might have a defeatist mindset. So your best choice in life may be to just leave them behind and you have to work on yourself. Who has been the greatest influence in your life? That's actually a really tough question. I would have to say for that question I actually have two answers and that would be both of my parents because my parents are the true definition of resilient. They work every day trying to make a living and supporting me and my siblings. And I could never ask for any better parents because no matter what I want to pursue or what I want to do for school, what I want to do after school for activity, they've supported me 100% and they've given me that back support that no matter what I'm going to do, they'll be there for me. How do you manage your schoolwork with the Boy Scouts? I manage my schoolwork and my Boy Scouts because with school, it's always come naturally to me. Like ever since pre-K, I've always made school my priority and school is easy for me. So I'm able to handle my schoolwork in enough time that I can handle other, th other things. But if anything comes up unexpected, such as like Regents or SAT prep, my Scoutmaster is very like lenient, lenient. So if I have to study for something, he'll be like, okay, you can take this off, this day off, or you can get back to someone at this time. So it's a combination of me finding my balance in work and my scoutmaster being the great person he is. Do you have any additional activities besides the Boy Scouts? Well, I have a few hobbies. I like creative writing and I like theater, but my main activities would probably be student participating in my school student government. 
um, participating in my school's mock trial team and attending church. In my church, I'm very active. I've been active since I was a little kid. And it's one of the things that's always kept me going because that's like an entirely separate family than my actual family. And in my church, I do usher, I'm on the choir, and I feel that that's helped me mature into the young man I am today. Share with us some of your favorite influence songs on your playlist. The most influential songs on my playlist would probably be Connect by Drake and Love Yours by J. Cole. And both of those songs, they have different meanings, but the general consensus of those songs is basically that you can never really forget your past. In the song Connect, you really have to see like who's brought you up to your point, and in Love Yours, you have to see who's helped you become the person you are today. What do you think is your favorite thing to do besides Boy Scouts and schoolwork? Oh, that's hard. I think my favorite thing to do would probably just spend time with my family because those are really my favorite people on earth, and without them, I wouldn't be anywhere. Do you have any other siblings? Yes, I actually have two older brothers and one older sister. My older sister is currently at Herkimer College, and my two brothers are living with me. And I wouldn't ask for any other siblings. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much. being with us today on October 20th, 2016. With the National Give Back for Kids campaign, spon sponsored by the National Give Back for Kids campaign, show Ignite, Empower, Transform. Thank you. Cut. Welcome to our next segment of Ignite, Empower, and Transform. I'm the board chair of the National Give Back for Kids campaign, Rachel Cheeks Gavan, and I'm honored and pleasured to have the opportunity to interview our next guest, Coach Spencer. So to start off, Coach Spencer, yes. tell us how was Bronx Storm created? Well, Bronx Storm started off as my need to do something for my daughter. My daughter, we've been in different AAU traveling basketball teams. She also plays for her uh, high school, which is your alma mater. Uh, Cardinal Spellman in the Mighty, Bronx. Mighty Spellmanites. Mighty Spellmanites, that's right. And um, I wanted to make sure that she had some place that I could help develop her talents. So we developed Bronx Storm, which started off with just seven girls. Started, and from February to, April, to August, we had a nice, nice record of 32 and 13. The girls played their butts off. Now we added some more girls. We're doing fundraising in the, in the neighborhoods. Mm. We're going out and trying to do different things to get the girls so they don't, the parents don't have to pay all the money for these different tournaments. So we try to get fundraising sponsors to help us out. We got a fun, GoFundMe page, Facebook page to help donate for that as well. So it's, it's a lot going on with the girls. So I see you're inspired to give back. Yes, always. Quite a bit. And have you imparted that inspiration to the girls that are on the team? Oh, what we try to do over the past couple of years, we try to go and uh, Thanksgiving help feed the homeless. Mm -hmm. Christmas time we give um, uh, Christmas wrapping and we go out and give Christmas gifts to some of the young kids, some kids who may not have a home, who may not have a Christmas. So we help in different um, locations throughout the Bronx to just try to give something, give back, basically. That's great. Now, I'm just gonna switch gears a little bit because I learned something about you. Um, you had another name for yourself, yes. but yes. Um, how has your experience in the world of hip hop helped in your endeavor? I have always been known as Spence Boogie. 
Everyone's known me since for Spence Boogie for I love it forever. <laughs> since I might have been 14, 15 years old, dancing, DJing, playing music. I used to manage um, recording artists. I used to do tour management for recording artists. So I was in, ingrained in the music for a long period of time, and that was the best experience ever. And what impact did that have on what you've created with the Bronx Storm? Well, with hip hop, we created several um, record shows, uh, radio shows, excuse me. Um, we have one show called Classic Flavors on WBLS. That's every Saturday. We've, my partner and I also created a show called Sports on Wax, which was a sports talk show that had hip hop music playing in the background. So that created my, put thoughts in my head of creating programs for kids, which turned into Bronx Storm. And that helped me be able to go out and help for kids that don't have a chance to do certain things. They just come with us and we just keep training, develop, coach, athletically and uh, academically. Now you seem like a visionary man. Yes. So where do you see Bronx Storm five years from now? I want to own a building that has about four or five basketball courts Ooh. in it that could be able to have the kids come off the streets, out of the projects, even the suburbs, and just come into the, into the program, play basketball, play on a team, learn to be organized, learn to be a team player, and grow from there. You hear that? This is a superhero right here. I'm trying. And we consider you one. I'm, I'm very proud to have this honor to speak with you, but what is your superpower? To see the need in some people. Mm. To see the need that, okay, I know this person, girl or boy, needs a little something, needs right. an extra little pat on the back, an extra little word of encouragement, a phone call for that person. That was the same thing I did with music. Sometimes a recording artist can get their music recorded but can't get it out to the right people. So sometimes it's, it's that extra phone call. It's, it's letting somebody else know, look, this is good over here. Same thing with sports. A girl or boy has a talent, but maybe their grades are not right. right. Maybe their parents don't have the opportunity to get in front of a right coach. So those are little things that I would like to try to continue to do. It's such a gift. And what would you say is your kryptonite? Sometimes I tend to look at people mm. and say, hey, you know what, I'll help. And then I get, for lack of a better word, screwed over later on. Mm. And you still try to look the, you know, the good in people, but you're like, okay. I got messed over, it's okay, we'll just move on to the next. I'm not gonna hold whatever happened with me and that person onto the next person, so. Right, and usually you take those experiences as a teachable moment. Oh, 100%. Right, not only for yourself, but also for, for that individual exactly. as well, right? Exactly, So tell me, who has been your greatest influence in your life? Real easy question, real easy answer, my mother. My mom, mm -hmm. she's, when I was growing up, she was my mother and father. My dad had moved down, back down to South Carolina, so mom acted as mom, dad, uh, psychologist, psychiatrist, bailiff, uh, judge, jury, execution at times. Wow. She did everything. So working two jobs overnight, my, I was watching my sister, and I tell my kids now, my sister and I used to walk back and forth to school, stay home by ourselves till 11 o'clock, and my mom did the second and third shift as a nurse. So she did a hundred different things mm -hmm. at the same time to make sure we had and we didn't need. You know, so I try to make sure my kids know, I'm going to make sure you have and you don't need things. Now, what you want is a whole other That's right. <laughs> chapter. That's right. So we figured out the want stuff later, but right now you don't need anything. So that's my, that's my superhero to a mm -hmm. point. I would call her super mom. Super mom. And we know there's it. a number of them that oh, are yes. out there today. Oh, yes. So if you had one last message that you wanted to give the next generation, the youth of today, what would you tell them, Coach Spencer? As a coach... Practice your skills, develop your talent, pay attention to coach, pay attention to people who are actually trying to help you, listen to what they're doing for you. They're not, not everybody's trying to take something from you, mm. so make sure that you're listening to them and, and take what they have home and take it to heart. For academics, keep your grades up. You can shoot 30 a game, block everything, but if you're dumb as a brick, they're not gonna sign you. They're not gonna bring you to their program they are going to want to make sure that this kid has the education, the knowledge, the personality to be able to bring onto their program, into their program. And what's your hope and dream for those that you are constantly coaching on a daily basis? That I get to go to their games and see mm. them play. Maybe see them coach later on. Maybe see them develop their own programs. And, you know, if they get into the NBA or the WNBA, I get to go for, get free tickets. That's it. Well, thank you. You have been a true inspiration. I appreciate you for having me. Oh, no. We, we would love to have you back. And, and it's great to hear that there's a coach like yourself. And like I mentioned, mm -hmm. um, 
I tell people I had two coaches that were there for me. Right. Um, they were swim coaches. I swam every day. And, you know, those are the people that you remember when you get older. 100%. And you look back and you say, you know, when they were pushing me to do these things like that you now felt, you right, now, <laughs> like now, now get I get it. it. And yeah. that's what I want the next generation yes. to know. I mean, it's hard work. But again, it took people that took the time out to really um, invest in you. That's true. And invest in your, you know, your, your life. Because a lot of know? kids don't understand what coaches actually invest. Like right now, I'm here. I'm talking about them. I have two games getting ready to happen. I'm running over there. I have my kids doing homework. We're getting ready to get ourselves together. But we keep moving. It's because I love to see them get better. That's it. Well, I thank you for all of thank your service you. and your time. And I just want to wrap up this segment of Ignite, Empower, and Transform. Thank you. Welcome to another edition of Ignite, Empower, Transform, where today our guest is Judge Nichelle Johnson. Nichelle, yes. welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, sir. We're glad to have you. I'd like to start out with you telling us a little something about who you are. Yes, sir. Well, uh, as indicated in the intro, I am Judge Nichelle A. Johnson. Uh, I'm a judge in the city court of Mount Vernon, New York, where I reside currently with my husband and my four daughters, uh, who are actually aged 21, 19, 17, and 15. And I've been a judge in the city court for almost a year now. Okay. Thank you for that yes, sir. information. Now, um, Tell us a little bit about your Bronx roots, because I understand that's where you grew up. Yes, sir. Actually, uh, I grew up, uh, we moved to 875 Boynton Avenue, Lafayette and Story, uh, arguably near the Soundview section of the Bronx, and I moved there when I was about maybe seven years old and spent most of my uh, young life in the Bronx, New York, right there at 875 Boynton Avenue. I remember walking over to the Hunts Point Market, going to shop at Southern Boulevard, uh, running track, and getting on that number six train almost every other day, sir. Well, you know, I'm a little bit familiar with that area since I also grew up in the same area, yes, just on the other side of the highway. Yes. Um, what I want to know is, when did you decide to go into the field of law and what were your influences to do so? Well, you know, as a young uh, girl in the Bronx growing up, uh, with two things that I wanted to be it was either an actress or a lawyer. And uh, lo and behold, years after uh, I finished college, I was working at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York for about two years, and I decided uh, to go to law school. And I went to law school actually part-time. So for some reason, when I was young, it was always a desire to either go into acting or to go into law. So I finally did the law thing, and I actually went to law school part-time. Uh, part of the influence of just going in was that, uh, one, I guess I felt I had the ability to influence people. Uh, with my oral debate skills and then also just having a real desire to serve uh, people because certainly being an attorney uh, is a service field. I mean you're uh, dealing with clients and you're uh, satisfying their needs in terms of legal issues that they're having and so that was really the motivation to go to law school. Uh, yes sir. Okay good good. Um, so your experience thus far has been fairly fairly good? Wonderful. I have to say that, you know, I always tell young people that you really have to love the career that you're in. And I have to say that when I was an attorney, I loved it. Uh, I was able, I was a litigating attorney, so I actually engaged in quite a bit of trial practice, which uh, involved being in court, uh, you know, direct examination of witnesses, opening and closing arguments. And I have to say that in a small way, I satisfied that actress thing that I had when I was younger because certainly being a litigating attorney requires a skill set of being able to present uh, before people and use voice inflection and actually some acting ability. So I really enjoyed being an attorney. So in other words, you got the best of both worlds. I sure did. <laughs> Good it's for really you. wonderful. Good for you. Okay, another thing I wanted to ask you is your thoughts on becoming the first female Muslim judge in Westchester County. How do you feel about that? Well, I, I really love it. You know, uh, the beauty about being Muslim is that if people were looking at me, uh, they would say that they would not be able to tell per se that I am Muslim. And recently there was a real big uh, push in advertising where they were showing different types of people who were Muslim. And I love the fact that arguably when you look at me, you may not know that I'm Muslim, but I am. And it gives people a, a bigger understanding that Islam is not just what you see, 
Uh, it's really uh, uh, what you feel when you meet people and, and what we observe. And so while you are not able to tell, I love that I am Muslim. And when people look at me, they say, oh, I didn't know. And I have to say, yeah, it's not a certain look, but it's just that I absolutely, absolutely observe the Quran and I read from that book. Uh, we also study from the Bible, but I love being a person that you may not think is Muslim, but I am because it shows the world that we come in different shapes, forms, and fashion. Okay, good. Have you met any challenges in particular because of your, your uh, Muslim affiliation? No, not really. I have to say that uh, uh, people are, are, are very uh, wonderful in terms of accepting the fact that we're different. And I think also just in the way that my family and I carry ourselves, there's no mystery, you know, people recognize that we're just regular people, just like they are, friends and family, they know, although we observe, you know, uh, a different religion than some of them. Uh, so I haven't really had too many problems. There have been some people that have asked questions uh, about uh, if I'm Muslim, how do I feel about Sharia law? being a judge, which law will I apply? You know, the law of the United States of America or Sharia law, which was a ridiculous question to me, but I understand that some people may have some concern where they have, they lack understanding. So I answered that question and then we moved on, but I have to say it's been wonderful and I haven't had any real challenges. Yeah, that, that's, good, that's good to hear. It's, it's opening, up, opening up the gates for people to recognize that people are people and you take them as they are. Okay, um, as a leader in your community, which you are, um, how do you, how have you given back to the community? Boy, I tell you, well, you know, first of all, a lot of, I did, one of the reasons why I guess I, I became a judge is also because as an attorney, I would do a lot of pro bono work, and that's certainly given back. I just had this thing that I felt that uh, I was a lawyer, I was there to serve, and for some reason, God didn't allow me to ask people for a lot of money when I did it sometimes no money at all. Uh, so uh, I think that's one way that I certainly gave back to my community. Anyone knew that they can call me up and say, Michelle, I don't have any money, but I need some advice or I need some representation. And I would rise to the occasion and represent them even when there wasn't money forthcoming. Um, yes, and in addition to that, uh, you know, I definitely volunteered at the schools. I always went in on career days and uh, we have an anti-violence movement in Mount Vernon where you know people go into the into the schools to talk to the students about things and so I've been involved in that I've mentored quite a few people in my career or has as, as I've been an attorney I've actually uh, trained uh, new lawyers or young students that are at law school I've done that pro bono for free I would go in and coach and do certain things and so uh, you know I've been pretty active in the community Okay, well, knowing you for a couple of years, I, I know that's your nature, so that, that's a good thing, and I, and I know these people are benefiting from this. Um, I wish I had been in contact with you a couple of years ago. <laughs> <All right>. um, <laughs> yes, I know now. So, um, we consider you a superhero, and considering yourself a superhero, what are your superpowers? I have to say my superpower would certainly have to be the fact that I am certain uh, I exercise a certain amount of humility and I believe I've mastered my interpersonal skills and how to get along with people from everywhere and so I've had a skill set where I've not really had issues with people because I've mastered being able to communicate and having what I would uh, view as supreme interpersonal skills that allow me to get along and influence people just by the fact that I've mastered that skill set. So that is definitely uh, a power that I have okay. and that I've used throughout my life to get certain places and to even be judged today. I, I'm going to throw a little curveball at you. If you had to give yourself a superhero name, what would you give yourself? Oh boy. Ten superhero seconds. Name. I, I knew I'd put you on the spot. Yeah. I just thought I'd try. <laughs> <laughs> super judge, let's just go with that. <laughs> okay. So knowing your superpowers, uh, which are, are great, um, I, I appreciate that. What would you consider your kryptonite? Uh, probably, I don't know, taking on a little too much at times uh, than I probably should bear. And... Uh, and so that gets me a little frazzled at certain points because I really try to do too much, uh, certainly at, at certain times, and I extend myself. Uh, so that would be just trying to do everything for everybody sometimes gotcha. is just tough. 
Gotcha. Well, I think we all kind of fall into that because we're giving people naturally. Exactly. So this is something we do and we, we can't help ourselves. That's right. And, and we applaud you for doing so. Yes, sir. Uh, one other question I have for you, and this, is, this should be fairly easy, but sometimes a little tough. Um, your greatest influence. Well, who's been the greatest, who or what has been the greatest influence in your life? Well, I would say that uh, my mother, who was, uh, who's not here today, was a wonderful influence in terms of uh, just uh, being humble and uh, being a person who tried to serve needs of other people. I learned that from a very young age because my mother was very, very kind, very giving. And I want to say that in terms of that particular uh, aspect of my personality, I think I learned a lot from her to just be a caring person. Uh, but certainly as it comes to later on in life and being able to uh, master myself and, and, and exercise a uh, certain a degree of uh, self-worth and understanding who I am, who my people are, who other people are, I have to say that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad is one of my biggest influences as we speak today uh, because uh, he left supreme wisdom, which uh, I have, I'm studying, I'm learning, I teach my children in that course of study uh, is a wonderful course of study that has helped me to master a number of situations, people, and things in a very positive way. Okay. Okay. Um, in terms of your influence upon those you touch, um, have you have you seen any growth in those people? Anything come out of that? No question. Uh, even as I sit today as a judge, uh, I generally try to communicate with people, uh, and. I find that they react very wonderfully when you're engaging them in a conversation and you show that you understand that there could be some issues or that they're having some problems. And, and so I want to say, yeah, the impact is wonderful when I say to them that we're bigger than any uh, problem we may be going through, any mistakes we may have made, and the fact that uh, we're people that deserve second chances, you know? Good. Good. And um, how do you... Um how do you go about establishing your, your initial rapport with people? Because we know, especially in, in your job, uh, people are kind of hypersensitive uh, because they never know what the outcome is going to be. So how do you establish that rapport being a judge now and not a lawyer? Right. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so the bottom line is you treat people very wonderfully. In other words, when you come into the courtroom, amount of respect, no matter what their issue may be, what side they're on, a, a good morning, as if you care about everybody that's in that room, goes a long way. And so that people, when they come in to be judged, arguably, know that the person that's sitting there has taken time to greet them accordingly and to give them that respect as a person that's in that courtroom. That goes a long way. And so I find that they react wonderfully when they see that they're being respected, no matter what side they're on. Gotcha. So it's all about respect. Yes, sir. Well, Judge Nichelle Johnson, um, I'd like to thank you for taking time to sit and talk to us. And I'm sure you probably influenced a few young folks out there to reevaluate their, themselves and what they're going to do in their next step. So thank yes, you sir. very much for coming and spending time yes, with sir, us. Mr. Stark, so good to have you. And um, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Brother.